Hey, what's going on? In this video, I'm going to be making a 7-inch chef knife with some stainless steel Damascus from Demoworks. This is their large pyramid design. As always, you can find links to most of the tools and materials I use in my videos on my website, davidmoonforge.com, under the product links tab. I don't want to distort the pattern in this Damascus, plus it's got a really tight hot working window of 1740 to 1920 degrees Fahrenheit, so I won't be forging this knife to shape. I scribed a center line along the cutting edge to use as a reference when grinding the bevels. If you don't have a center scribe, you can use a drill bit that's roughly the same thickness as your material. Just flip your blade over and mark it from both sides to find the center. From what I understand, stainless steel dust can be very toxic, so make sure you use proper protective equipment to keep you safe. I used a center punch to mark all of my handle pin holes for drilling. This will prevent your drill bit from slipping and give you a precise location for your hole. I also drill out several holes to reduce the weight in the handle and also to give an open channel for the epoxy to bond through. I chamfer all of the edges to reduce stress risers in all of the hard 90 degree angles. Stainless steel tool wrap is crazy sharp on the edges, so be careful working with it. I found that a hand seamer works great to crimp over the edges of your pouch. I'm trying to create an oxygen deprived environment for the blade during heat treat to prevent surface oxidation. I'm holding this at 1950 degrees Fahrenheit for 30 minutes before plate quenching. I put quench this between two one-inch aluminum plates, along with some forced air from the compressor. Surprisingly enough, these plates usually have a blade cool enough to touch in less than a minute. I didn't show it on video, but I placed a small piece of paper in the foil wrap to burn off any remaining oxygen as it heated up in the kiln. Just don't place it directly on the blade because it can distort your finish where it burns. I tested the hardness before tempering, and this blade was sitting right between 61 and 62 Rockwell. I ran two temper cycles for two hours each at 360 degrees Fahrenheit. This achieved a final hardness of around 60 Rockwell. I use Windex as a lapping fluid when sanding. This keeps the blade cool and also helps remove steel debris and keeps it out of the air. I etch my maker's mark with an electrochemical etching tool. This is the Personalizer Plus. I took this finish up to 600 grit before the first etch in acid. I used ferric chloride for my first attempt at etching this blade. I've never worked with stainless steel Damascus, so this was a little experimentation for me. The first etch came out really uneven and blotchy, so I decided to resand the 600 grit finish and try some gator piss. The gator piss gave a much more even finish, but it didn't get as dark as I'm used to with non stainless Damascus. I decided to order a product specifically designed for etching stainless Damascus and got some Gator Piss Max. This also gave me a good opportunity to make a new acid tank with the aquarium bubblers built in. Using the bubbler has been a huge help with getting an even etch on Damascus. This gave a nice even finish and I think it turned out a little darker than the previous etch. Following the Gator Piss Max instructions, I polished the blade on a buffing wheel between three 15 minute etch cycles. I still wanted a darker finish, so I figured I'd try a coffee etch to see if it darkened any of the oxides. I don't think this really had any effect on the pattern. I liked the look of the blade best after buffing, so I decided to leave it that way. It removed most of the oxides, but it creates a more subtle look to the pattern that I think kind of works for a chef knife. These are a set of stabilized spalted ash scales that the customer picked out. 
After drilling the pinholes, I'll finish the fronts of the scales up to 400 grit before gluing the handle in place. I clean all of the surface as well with acetone to remove any oils and debris before applying a two-part epoxy. I let the epoxy cure overnight before shaping the handle. I like to cut off the ends of the handle pins by hand with a hacksaw because it generates less heat. Too much heat from a bandsaw or grinder can degrade the epoxy bond along the pins. When sanding the surface flush, I constantly touch the surface with my bare finger to ensure it doesn't get too hot. It also helps to use lower grit belts because they remove more material without generating as much heat as a higher grit belt does. As I start to shape the handle, I start with the 36 grit belt to remove the bulk of the material. I only use higher grit belts to clean up the surface. I take the handle up to a 220 grit belt on the belt grinder before switching over to hand sanding. I know some people don't like this style of finishing a Damascus knife where the pattern along the tang and spine are removed, but I personally like it. I prefer the seamless feel of the transition between the tang and the scales. The only time where I don't do this is with a hidden tang knife or a removable handle construction. I like to round over the spine of the knife to make sure that it's comfortable when using a pinch grip. I like to use Odie's oil as a finish, especially on natural material handles. I apply three coats and allow 12 to 24 hours of cure time between coats. I like to sharpen my chef knives with a 14 degree edge, and I get that precise angle using these angle guides. I progress through diamond stones at 300, 1200, and 3000 grit. I finish it up on a double sided leather strop loaded with 5 micron diamond paste on one side and 3.5 micron diamond paste on the other. Lastly, I'll apply a food safe blade wax to help the Damascus pattern really pop, but a wax isn't really necessary to protect a stainless steel blade. I'd love to hear your tips and tricks for finishing stainless steel Damascus in the comments. Thanks for watching.